Hey everybody, thanks for listening to the Catch a Pocket Podcast. My name's Lori Burris and I'll be your host tonight and or today or whenever. Uh, my next guest is Mr. Wade Hampton. He is a great artist. He does mixed media. He does commercial art all the way from logos he developed the woo, one of the woos we use in our sports program here at WSU. Um, he does short films and long films. He does music videos. He is just an all-around the town good guy, great artist, genius, quite genius. If you get a chance to ever hang out with him, I say do it. Do it now if you can. And uh, I appreciate and I'm very honored that he took time to hang out with me and uh, in turn hang out with you, the listener. Um, So it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce Mr. Wade Hampton. Wade Hampton and um, he's an artist here in Wichita so were you born in Wichita? Technically yeah I was born in uh, the old St. Joseph Hospital okay 1967 and but I grew up uh, right outside of Clonmel Kansas population three that's a true story really yeah back then we remember what's it called again Clonmel Clonmel it's like 17 miles southwest of Wichita do you remember when the maps used to literally have the population next to the city? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Clonmel had three because there was a family that lived in Clonmel. It was like a family a, of yeah, three. A family of three. Wow. And we lived on a farm, literally on a dirt road down the road. And uh, so I grew up on a farm, but I went to school at Clearwater all 12 okay. years. So, yeah, that's where I, I know Clearwater. Yeah. So it's just past Hayesville from here to the yes, south. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of know it. Um, know a couple of people that might live there or do live there sure so. yeah yeah so how long were you there all your uh formidable years? i yeah i lived <clears throat> clon mill till i uh graduated from clearwater but i went to clearwater kindergarten through 12 cool yeah i went to the whole time and i'm the youngest of 10 kids and i was the only kid that had done that because everybody else went to some catholic school because right up the road from us was mm-hmm. a catholic church still is i mean it's still there right. but there was a catholic school and all my siblings did some time at the Catholic uh-huh. Church, but they'd closed it by the time I was born. So I went to uh, public school. Yeah, I guess the 13 years to public school. And uh-huh. there was always a joke that I used to say that's why I was the normal one because I had, hadn't gone through the <laughs> nuns beating the crap out of them like everybody else got. Yeah, so right. I never had any of that. <laughs> that's good. That's good. No corporal punishment at all well, because I, I was punished a little bit. I was right at the cusp of where they oh, stopped I hitting was, you a lot. I, you know? I didn't have it at school, no. At home, my, you know, my dad could be a little bit of a pain, but yeah. Right. It wasn't anything terrible, but yeah, school was quite normal for me, but I'd hear their horror stories of, yeah, the rulers and being beaten, and I was just like, what? Yeah, they could just whack you. Well, I was old enough that I remember at Clearwater that, you know, teachers would have their paddles on their wall, Uh uh and they'd threaten you, and they could just, yeah, they could just take (laughs) you out and just paddle you. And beat you, basically, and bring you back in. So I was a pretty law-abiding kid, because I didn't want to be hit, so I was just like, but now, of course can't do that but back then it worked i always thought it worked because you would see that paddle and they point at it and you're like mm-hmm. yeah anyway, totally so. and all the visions of whatever it could be oh sure 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 your mind. absolutely all right so then after that you grew up in the country so what brought you to the city well i went to wichita state mm-hmm. and uh after wichita state i stayed in wichita and at 19 i had become a designer for a company called the resort mm-hmm. and I was a, I've always been a terrible student. There's a reason I'm saying this is that they offered me a full-time job. I was only a junior at WSU because I never graduated uh, from college. And I was like, well, I'm already doing it. You mm-hmm. know, to me, it was like, well, I have a full-time job as a designer. Right. I'm good. Yeah. Because I'd already gone through my all my art classes. Mm-hmm. And they were like, well, you know, you still have to do all your other. And I was like, oh. 
Oh, because to me, yeah. I was like, I don't want to do any of that. So <laughs> I uh, just started working at resort, and uh, obviously, I you know got my first place. I think my first apartment. Uh, we were in a house that should have had two people. There's five of us. Okay, jammed in it. We had two bedrooms. We had actually had built a uh, uh, um, bunk bed for three. That's how much we had jammed <laughs> in this place. So awesome. the guy, <clears throat> excuse me, the guy on the top was so close to the ceiling that he had to crawl in the little space. And when he'd wake up every morning, he'd hit his head because he oh, was that close to the right. ceiling. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was good, and I just stayed. I For a while, with a buddy of mine at the time, we were going to move out, and we got accepted into, God, what was it, Minneapolis College of Art and Design, MCAD, mm. in Minneapolis. We are going to go for film. So that was about 23, 24, and I thought, well, this is me getting out of town, you know, the right. typical getting out of town. We found out we just couldn't afford it. They weren't going to give us any kind of financial aid. Oh, really? Nothing. They also wanted to just completely start over from scratch. Uh-oh. They wouldn't transfer in our credits. And then shortly about a year after that, we started an art group called The Famous Dead Artist. Right. And that kind of took off for me in the sense that I thought, okay, for the time being, I'm I'm staying. Right. And then I just going, stayed. Yeah. yeah. And, and kind of go into that Famous Dead Artist for, for someone who doesn't know very much about it. Or... Well, at the time... I think to tell my story to lead up to that was I always call 18 to 25 my lost years because mm-hmm. I really didn't know. I knew I liked art and I took my art classes and I was doing design during the day, but I didn't really feel like I was doing anything I was very passionate about. Right. And I always tell people this now when they're younger, I laugh because it does. I thought I was done. You know, I was 23. I was so old and I hadn't <laughs> figured out what I was going to do. I had missed my calling. Right. So I was kind of depressed and a buddy of mine uh scott Steele, i remember i think we were 24 said hey you want to take a painting class that's just a night class mm-hmm. we took it from brian hinkle an artist in town and it was the first time i mean i had made art on my own but it was always four people like will you do a drawing mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. so i took this class and it was the first time i remember the final assignment he wanted us to do three paintings whatever you wanted to do mm-hmm. which was kind of like whoa now i had done some stuff for myself before but right. not really paint not so I did three paintings, paintings yeah. right? So I did. I thought, okay, this is strictly for me, and I did them, and he really liked them, and so I started painting. Uh-huh. And then I, Scott, and I have to give credit. We had gone to one fish house show because the fish house was doing their thing. The four guys, mm-hmm. and uh, they know this story, I think now because I think the world of them. I, they're all obviously talented, but the show we saw, Definitely. I remember it was at the Center for the Arts, and we were like, this stuff's garbage. Mm-hmm. We can do this. Oh yeah. Because I felt like it was, but it's not true. But at right. the time, because I now know how talented those guys are. <laughs> but we were really in this, we can do this. Well, yeah. So I had a buddy. Oh, well, I should say my brother had a buddy that had a retro furniture gallery, which is about a half a block away from where Planet Hair now. It used to be F&L Denim and all this stuff used to be okay. back in there. Mm-hmm. And it was called Keen by Design. And he knew I had a bunch of paintings. And he said, would you hang them on my wall? And I remember going, oh, that'd be cool. I said, can I? I have other people I know. Could mm-hmm. we bring some art? Sure. We had a huge space. Right. So Scott did it. And at the time, the girl I was dating that was in the group, Jenny Wallace, had some piece. She did it. Mm-hmm. And I threw screen printing new Mark Bosworth. And he's like, yeah, I'll bring stuff. Cool. My roommate, Brad Hart, he'd do it. Never met him. Mm-hmm. His girlfriend, Pam Terry, will do it. Oh, which is cool. This is all yeah. famous dead artists. Right. And Gulick was down there. We didn't know Gulick. He okay. had some stuff hanging down there. And then Jenny said, well, my sister's getting her master's, I believe, at WSU Lee Leighton Wallace. Can oh, she do okay. stuff? So we just hung. Mm-hmm. And shortly after that, for some reason, he shut the place down. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of like, well, crap. We like showing with each other. Right. And Planet Hair, God bless them, said, you can have a show over here. We were literally sitting it on their chairs, whatever. So after that, wow. every six months... And we had ended up naming his place. He said, we should call this a gallery, too. So we came up with the name Famous Dead Artist Gallery. Uh-huh. And when he closed it down, we just kept the name. And we made a rule, I think, every six months to have an art show. Oh, that's awesome. And we just would have it. Whoever I, would let you. Oh, my God. You had you walls. Yep. We'll hang. Really? Yeah. Now, awesome. you know, you've been doing it long. You're like, oh, I may. But then, yeah, when you're young and hungry. Work for my stuff. That's why I see <laughs> when young people ask me, it's like, anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. You can find wall space, even your own home. Hang your stuff. Hang your stuff. Invite some people over. Put some chips out and put you a price on it. You happen. never know what's going to happen. That's so, awesome. And we showed together for, I don't know, a number of years. But I think where I went my separate way and a few other people, just like you hear in bands and everything, everybody mm-hmm. gets passionate about their individual sure. vision. and Time changes everything. Time changes and, you know, and everybody kind of does their own thing. Right. So. You start going after ambitions that you didn't have in your head previously 
And uh, I had so much fun in the the first years of Famous Dead Artists because I didn't know any of this was possible. I right. was painting and I was showing and people were showing up and they yeah. were even buying some of it. So I was so excited <laughs> by just everything. But what was happening, and I think it always happens if you're an artist or a creative or anybody, mm -hmm. is you start to have your own ideas. You know, I kind of, and then other people say, eh, it's not my thing. Right. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But I got to a point where I was kind of like, after the famous dead artist, I said, I'm never going to be in a group again. Right. Not, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it was like, if I have a show, it's going to be my show. It doesn't need to have a whole meeting to right. get something done if it's right. all by yourself, that right. kind of thing. And it's been, I've had more fun now, now, just doing my own solo shows because no one can say, oh, I'm not that, because I get it. Either they're, it, they're there right. because they already saw something probably and they're right. like, Right, there or right. their friend says you have right. to come or right. you know that kind right. of thing well i meant uh, i don't have to deal with other artists saying, right well don't you think we because as an artist <laughs> you want to do your thing right. especially as you get older right you got your sorry i'm trying to i got mexican <laughs> food in my mouth we had mexican it was um, delicious it was delicious but i found Brilliant. i found that i was uh yeah i had things i wanted to say and do and present and I say this with all the respect in the world. The last thing you want to do is have somebody tell you yeah, yes or no. Right. If you're doing your own thing, you're the boss. Yeah. That's exciting. Don't care what. Me. Right. Don't care what everybody. Thinks. But they get to do it too. You right. get to go see their exhibition. And, and go, you might be would... the same way too. You might right. be like, Ew, I don't really like. I wouldn't know where they're going. But yeah, if in I was in a group mind, with yeah. you, that would have been like, oh, we have to do this. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Famous Editors was super important to me. I mean, yeah. it was literally kind of the birth of me as an artist because it allowed me to not only be around other artists who right. inspired me but we were getting our name out there and i we saw other people doing the same thing too mm -hmm. so i gotta give i always give respect uh if it wasn't for the fish house we may have not right. existed but i know people saw us and did the same thing right i've had people say you know famous dead artists made me want to do blah 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 so it, you pass it right on. and they basically started the whole final friday that we we observe. start we at started it with, uh, we were above, it was Big Sky at the time, now it's Rain Cafe. Okay. We had a gallery up there called the FDA Lounge, Famous Dinners Lounge. Cool. And we would go up there and hang out, and we had heard of First Fridays in other towns. At KC and stuff. Yeah, Hayes right. had one too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started talking to Evo Gallery and Brent Miller and Z, I don't remember Z's last name. Sorry, Z, if you're listening to this. <laughs> um, they were across the hall, and we thought, well, let's do our own. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time, what had happened was Wham! was trying to do, Wichita Art Museum was trying to do a First Friday, mm -hmm. which is fine. But we were like, we're not going to go up against the Wichita Art Museum, right. so we're not going to do it the same night. And I think Mark Bosworth has remembered it as, because I don't, that Brent Miller said, well, we said, well, let's do it at the end of the month. And I think he said, what about final? And I remember somebody saying, well, that sounds pretty dark. Yeah. Final Friday. But we thought, screw it. It's just the two of us. Let's do it. <laughs> right. So we did some flyers. And I think shortly after that, Gallery 12, who's literally a block away, said, oh, we'll get in on that. Cool. So cool. it kind of happened. And when we knew that it had gotten at least a little bit of successful, is which the art museum actually switched over to Final Friday. Stopped doing First Friday. There you go. Because we were getting some legs. And I always say I have to give credit to the art scene in general because – we closed down Famous Dead Art after a certain amount of time, the lounge. Uh -huh. So we obviously weren't doing it. And other people picked still, up the torch and right. just kept carrying it when really a lot of people weren't doing it. Right. But the city started running the trolley and it took a lot of years and it finally just exploded. And, and they were developing the old town. I right. mean, that was right. all right. that. And I think Fish House being anchored on commerce caused more people to go into commerce because mm -hmm. there was go away garage. The arena came in and kind of right. changed things right. even differently. Right. right. And, and I remember one. I, viv I couldn't tell you what year it was, vividly being on Commerce, and it was just a sea of people. For I have, too. I've and on, been on, there, It yeah. was, like, in the fall, and we were just in, I think Starbucks had, like, a temporary booth set yeah, up. Yeah, it was crazy. We like, I mean, I've crap, been there this... several times right. when it looked like a festival right. was going on. And you're like, holy crap, like, this, this took awesome. off, because it would have died if we, <laughs> cause we only kept it going a few years. But no, that's just... why when people were, and I'm not. Have any dog in this fight when people are trying to change it to First Friday? Well, like, who cares? Well, it's fine if they want yeah. to, but I'm like, why? Yeah, it's been so long to build it up to what it is. Right, that's kind of my thing. Is I, <laughs> I'm a fan of marketing and branding, and to me, it's people. Been, yeah, people are people of habit. 
I yeah, think. They and, just know, you know Final Friday. I wonder what's going on Final Friday. I don't. I think they have to reprogram. <laughs> oh, it's actually first Friday now. They go. Isn't what? that just a week difference? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. There's nothing going on this day. Right, 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 right. Anyway. Or the little central breweries or something get all Right, right, them. right. <laughs> so that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. So um, so we talked about Final Friday. And I was going to talk to you about your painting because um, I just love it. I love the colors you use. And I know she just are really into face eyes, eyes on faces. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And you can make them look completely like not non-realistic and then completely you can see their soul right and I'm like is that intentional your intent well, or i would <clears throat> probably have to say honestly that uh um well yeah yes thank you yes but <laughs> i think where i'm at is that i've been on such a journey as a painter and i don't paint enough which is part of my problem because i'm so interested in so many other things mm -hmm. but when I started, you know, this would have been before Famous Dead Artist. It was like I wanted stuff to be as photorealistic as I could make it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it was, but I was, you know, I have a reference and I wanted that thing to speak the way that, yeah. whatever the, Some the inspiration. Really, I mean, wow. But then I got away from that because I started getting excited when I started discovering all these artists that were basically throwing paint and, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of the, the Basquiat's and the Carl Apple and all these yeah. people I looked to. So I started kind of going off on that, but... My mom, God rest her soul, would always say, would you get back to your pretty faces? I miss the pretty faces. <laughs> I remember after one of my shows when I was doing some pretty weird stuff, yeah. she walked up to me and she goes, well, the family's voted. You're getting worse. Oh, And I did. Cool. No, it didn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> but then she said the coolest thing. She goes, I go, well, it's funny because my artist friends think I'm getting better. And she goes, I know. It's like jazz where it just it's all squeaks and honks and it doesn't make any sense. And all the other jazz musicians says, hey. That's pretty cool. And I said, yeah, that's exactly it's what it exactly is. Thanks, Mom. what it is. But anyway, getting to the point, I had to go on that kind of journey. So slowly, recently, I've gotten back to this interest in, like, these faces. Mm -hmm. And they're still probably not where I want them to be because they're still mostly a lot of color and paint and throwing paint. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, I want to kind of just hit enough realism that you can kind of see oh, oh there's a the, face yeah the spirit yeah. of what that person's yeah. kind of going through or whatever and i look at some of them now and there's a couple i can think i thought boy i really nailed that and there's a couple that people love and i would never say which ones they are uh -huh. that i always thought was a little bit of a disaster and people like it and i go oh, i felt like i just didn't get it so totally but i'll i'll turn around and then want to do an abstract i'm all over the place right so i sometimes I like think that, if i could pick a style and go with it for a few years i might get somewhere with it but every time i do a show it's it's kind of a cluster so, something yeah. else captures so your mind. oh all over the place that's me in a yeah nutshell cool so um so where does the hate wade hate come from i think i was 18 well, how old would i have been this was when i was in college i had a roommate named keith webb and he was a really good illustrator, a lot mm -hmm. better than me. And I remember, he, uh, he was a roommate, so I remember him coming in. The vivid the way I remember him saying, oh, yeah, I see this drawing work on it. so different for me. And it was really cool. And he was a big Stephen King fan. And I think mm -hmm. Stephen King had a pseudonym. I want to say it was Richard Bachman or something that he yeah, used to, that's right. to do. Uh, he would uh, write under. And he said, I should sign this under a different name. And I, he goes, like, Richard Bachman. And then he came up with a name, and no disrespect, but it was just boring. Right. And I go, why would you want a, you're gonna, why you want a boring-ass name like that? We're going to have a pseudonym. I said, if I had one, I'd want it to be, you know, punk rock like Johnny Rotten, Sid Vicious, or David mm -hmm. Bowie. He goes, what would you have? And I said, I don't know, Wade Pate. <laughs> and then I, so I signed the piece I was working on, because I was working on it. It was a colored, uh, Conte colored drawing. I remember, I vividly remember the piece. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the Supreme Court had just passed legislation that an artist just by creating it owns their own work because it used to be this kind of big brouhaha that you had to trademark your work. Oh, well, the yeah. Supreme Court finally said, no, "You're no, an no. artist. You made it. It's your own goddamn work." Well, at work we were going through a trademark lawyer dealing with some stuff, and he mm -hmm. said, "When you know, anytime you put your name on something, just put a circle C, a copy right next to it. That right. means ownership." Right. Well, no one was doing that as I knew in art. You know, they were paying the thing. So I did Wade hate. And he laughed, and then I put a circle C next to it because I thought, well, copyrighted. Right. And I did that for the longest time. And I, when I was do weirder stuff, I would sign it Wade Hate. And then uh -huh. when I do my traditional stuff, it'd be Wade Hampton. Okay. And I didn't do it for a few years. And then one of the first shows for the Famous Dead Artists, my good friend, still my good friends, Tina and Alec Walterscheid, 
bought this giant painting from me and I painted it with like house paint and it literally was like this cartoon like guy's face and he's like chomping on somebody else it's really cartoon and it yeah. said I'd eat you for lunch that's all it said mm -hmm. I had never done anything like it and I was like oh, I can't do my signature and I went oh yeah I remembered Wade Hay so mm -hmm. I signed it big Wade Hay and at that show everybody's like what the hell is Wade Hay but mm -hmm. I remember thinking I'm t it had only been a few years but I'm like I'm doing this again yeah I like this juxtaposition and it just stuck so it's now awesome. yeah. even when especially in drawings if I think oh this is a little more tender I'll just sign it Hampton or my signature cool. but if it's typical stuff I just sign it Wade Hay okay. so I've had people joke that I'm a Gemini so it's my twins gotcha Hampton and Hay so you're you're good and you're bad right you're all three yeah, yeah, yeah. so hey. obviously it's for fun but I had a guy recently come up to me and meet me and he said i gotta tell you i was always put off by the whole way the hate thing and i remember thinking good mm. yeah that's care. okay that's fine yeah anyway and some people don't like richard bachman yeah so there yeah, you go so you it's know, not a big deal whatever um so that that leads me to kind of like is there anything right now that you love film film oh yeah yeah i've been working on film stuff for what kind of films well, it's funny because I've done a lot of stuff, but I feel like I haven't. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things, and I'm sure artists probably go through that all the time. But about it, this is actually our 10th anniversary, and I plan on doing something for it. But of Art Brute Film, my little film group, cool. yeah, we started. We did our first thing 10 years ago, and uh, yeah, I probably what was it. It was a extended music video for Gooding, who I'm super close with. Oh yeah, and it was funny because I think he ultimately hated it. Only because he thought it was going to be one thing, and I, it got a little carried away. Okay. Because I told him, I go, I think he had this song called No One Gets Out Alive. Uh-huh. And uh, it was not about what I made. I said, oh, No One Gets Out Alive. I've been right. thinking of this idea for a feature film that involves these vampires. Mm -hmm. That'll be perfect. Can I kind of use some of the imagery into this film, and this music video? And being the guy that he is, nice guy, he goes, I don't give a shit. Well, every <laughs> idea I'd come up with, he's, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Well, I go, well, this song's like three and a half minutes long. We've got like 10 different things. Well, let's, yeah, let's just make it. So I got it done, edited it. It was 16 minutes long. Ooh. I told him it's our thriller. Yeah. I sent it to the band. That's they were literally thinking. on tour. So they watched it like in a cafe. They hovered around his laptop. Oh, no. In a cafe. And they watched it. And afterwards, they just looked at each other like, what in the fuck was that? <laughs> and he goes, well, he called me Wade. And he goes, it's 16 minutes long. And I said, yeah, yeah I told you it's going to be a little long. He goes, I thought it was going to be like four and a half. <laughs> we have a 16-minute music video. He goes, and the song doesn't even come in until like halfway through it. And I go, yeah. So we ended up releasing just the, just the music video part. I mean, the other part's out there, too. It's on yeah. my website. Okay. But it was how I met Ryan and Cassandra, uh, uh, Ryan Johnson, Cassandra Twitchell. I'd met them. I was the lead zombie on oh, okay. Rod watch it's a zombie film called The Dead Can't Dance. Oh, cool. And they were extras, and we just hit it off. And yeah. the, they always said, anything you want, we'll do it. We want to be in film. Yeah. So I had an idea for this story, and I needed kind of this a young woman. Mm -hmm. And I, I, didn't, I didn't want to be the creepy old guy that's asking. So I reached out to them, unbeknownst, and they said, yeah, I think they were nervous. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, we've just been thick as thieves since. Cool. But... They've always been a part of Art Brute Film. Alec Walterscheid obviously has because I've worked with him for 20-some years. Yeah. And, and Andy Matlock and a bunch of other people, Greg Hunt and all these other people that have and, uh, recently. Oh, Emma Craig has done some oh, stuff. Emma, yeah. I wish she lived here so we could use her more. She's very good. Oh, she's beyond good. And yeah. Maria Lana, who you know, mm -hmm. and uh, has recently been in a film. And I've known Maria since she was five. Really? And we have plans to do a lot more. Cool. But the point being is all these kind of people, and I could go on and on, everybody that's helped us, Evanson and Justin Rupert, and I'm going to probably forget somebody and feel awful, but <laughs> we've done a lot of music videos for Gooding. And cool. he is... I think real good things are happening for his band, but it made this last album have to sit on it for a while. I mean, he's still promoting it, but the people that are behind him are like, okay, get out. And he's like, can I go into another album? Well, the nice thing is we right. haven't had to make a music video in a while. Oh, okay. So we had, because it's doing so well, they don't really well, need it, one right well, now. It's it's because, well, it's because, well, yes, it has people that are, uh, the newer people that keep signing on go, well, we still want to push this song. We still mm -hmm. want to, and he's in the, can I'm we ready. put out another album? I have this was out to it, right? And I'm going good because we made two. We just made two <laughs> music videos for him, but they take a while. Yeah. But when you're not doing music videos, you can work on your own stuff. So I feel yeah. like just in the last few years, we've been starting to work on films, and cool. we I wrote something for uh, 
Marie and Cassandra. It was a horror film called Kill a State that we did last year, which Neat. turned out great. And she was awesome, and Cassandra was awesome. And we've been working on this 20-plus minute short film called A Bullet for Breakfast for two stinking years. Nice. And in about three weeks, Andy and I finally are going to shoot the final scene that I'm in with him. Oh, wow. But I wear eye makeup. Uh And the reason I say that is I got this eye infection a bunch of months ago, and it turned out to be fine, but the doctor's like, I don't want you wearing your contacts for these many months. Mm-hmm. And I said, can I wear eye makeup? He's like, no, you can't wear eye makeup. <laughs> he was like, why are you asking me this? So we had to push all this shoot off, so I finally got a new eye doctor. I mean, she's the same yeah. place. But she finally said, you can wear your eye makeup. Just wash it thoroughly. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I wrote the guys, all guys at this point, on this particular shoot, and I said, okay, I got cleared for eye makeup and contacts. <laughs> We're shooting May 3rd, so God, as when this comes out, hopefully right. May 3rd we'll shoot the last of it. But We'll put the link on there, and we'll put the link to all your things oh, that you great. want me to. That'd be great. But yeah, we've made a lot of little things, and our goal is to ultimately make a feature film. I'm writing a feature film, and we'll see. It's hard work. Yeah. Films are hard. Yeah, I bet. I can't even imagine all the... It's wrangling cats. <sighs> wow. Yeah, it's, it's like hurry, 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 wait. Everybody Here's my was, thing. I'm 51 you know. years old. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. Andy and I, these characters we're going to play, I don't want to tell too much about They're very middle-aged, and mm-hmm. we're going to embrace how middle-aged you are. But, so if you see us look like we're in pain, it's going to be probably just us being achy and creaky. And <laughs> Alec, I don't, I, Alec won't mind if I tell the story. If he actually listens, he'll laugh. But he's, he's like us. He's not young. He was right. shooting. He was on the floor this whole time with his camera. And we're like, you ready, Alec? He's like, give me a second. I'm not sure I can get up. <laughs> So I understood. We just waited, and finally yeah. he went, Ugh. Okay, I'm ready. He kind of got up, yeah. and I thought, geez, we need young people helping yeah, us. God, we need young people. Us the... old people are too creaky to be rolling around on the ground. So anyway. I feel that. But I love film. Absolutely. Worship it. So is, is it a horror film, or is it a... The Bullet for Breakfast? Uh-huh. Yeah, a kind of. It's weird. Our stuff is weird. It's a bizarre... It's a bizarre... Story. artsy fartsy there's a story but yeah. i guarantee you if anybody sits through the 20 plus minutes it probably is will end and go what the fuck did i just watch uh, and i'm and i'm okay with that yeah because to me maybe i need to watch it again <laughs> well yes that's yeah. good and i hope that the feature which will probably also be that way i look at because we've been inventing all these characters a lot of these films tie together mm-hmm. and to me I'm a big fan of, it's like throwing paint. You know, you just put everything out there, and then when it's time for the feature, I can look and go, okay, that little bit there, I'd like to do more with that. Right. This character, I think we can go somewhere with that. And uh, so this is me just kind of barfing stuff out. It's not all good. Some of it's right. awful. Some of it's great. I mean, to me, I go, oh, that's great. I love yeah. that. But I know that most people watch it, and they go, what? You guys, we get a lot. You're so weird. <laughs> but to me, it's the same way with music. Right. If you're going to record some experimental stuff, you want to, to me put it out there and then sit back and maybe you go okay maybe i'll never do that again but right. i want to explore this a yeah definitely. definitely so it's hard for me to tell what it's about without letting somebody if i told you you'd say that makes absolutely no sense i want it to be a surprise anyway <laughs> it, will be I'll a watch surpri- it. it will be a surprise I, lo- I love watching the films um when i just recently interviewed lonnie quadabon yeah right. i was talking um about his films so i sure. went and looked on Prime to see what I could find, and I found a few, uh-huh. and I rented them all uh-huh. and watched them, like, one day, Good. one, one day, one. Right, right, know. right, yeah. And I mean, it's it's dated and antiquated because of the difference in time. But, right. But otherwise, great story, and, yeah. and what they were trying to say, I could totally get it. And sure. It was just really fun. I right. just had a lot of fun watching it. Right, so, right. Uh, I just love to see how people interpret their story and put I it out have. there. So cool. I have respect for any creative in any field, but I have big respect for filmmakers, especially yeah. people who make features, because there's so many things to have to align to get anything done. And so all, many people, yeah. so much money in so many locations. And, and then Lighting on top of it, and yeah, the and then on top of it all, you're supposed to go, oh, yeah, we're supposed this is supposed to be good. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to me when it is really good. It it's just like so talented you can just see right. the inspiration and the right. talent right it's it's to me it's awe-inspiring you know so that's why that's i try awesome. not to bag on especially if i through i don't know however many connections no point being is i try not to bag on anybody who's making a low-budget film right because they have all my respect that they even made the damn thing 
right? Even if you thought, well, that's not for me, it's like, dude, they made a feature film. This yeah. is a this is a feat. That's like saying, oh, you got the top of Mount Everest. Well, it took you a while. Yeah, you stumbled a lot, dude. I got it took there. Three tries. Right. Yeah. Boing. Yeah. Yeah. No. I people love to bag on, especially locally, stuff that people did because it's not very good. And you yeah. want to say, oh, let's see yours. Well, I don't, I don't yeah. Exactly. It. Exactly. Right. So. It's kind of like when someone says, "You're," for me, I cook dinner. I've got a 14 year old, and he says, "How." much it sucks sometimes <laughs> and uh, i'm right. thinking what'd you make man right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of that oh, i remember being in that place that's yeah. why i'm not a big fan of leftovers yeah because my mom god bless her eight trillion kids <laughs> i felt i used to say when did we have it the first time yeah because we were always having leftovers <laughs> now looking at all she had to keep track of yeah and i'm going <sighs> exactly leftovers. so you, you had how many brothers and sisters well, it's funny because my mom, you know, kind of technically, it's a long story, adopted an 11th. So uh -huh. uh, 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah. And how many are still living? All of them. Yeah. All of them. I'm the youngest and my oldest brother is, I bet, pushing 70. Okay. And we have, for the first time in four years, are having a family reunion in June. They're all going to be there. Cool. So all 11 do they do sister. it here? In... Yeah, we do it in Mulvane, actually. Mulvane? Yeah. yeah. That'll be so exciting. All... Is your dad still living? No, my mom and dad, Pat, my dad passed away. 16 years ago, I want to say, 15, and my mom okay. passed away four, three or four. Yeah, so. Okay, so this is just the kids having a family reunion? Yeah, we still got, you probably seen me post, my dad's sister, Aunt Dottie, getting ready to turn 98. Okay, Aunt so Dottie. So good old Aunt Dottie. And she's technically not, I mean, we're hoping she's there. She's not part of the, oh, sorry, <laughs> the okay. Tuttle side. That's my mom's side. This is a Tuttle okay. family reunion. Tuttle family. So it's my mom and her three sisters all there. Okay. Family. So, yeah. Cool. And my one of, my mom's youngest sister, uh, Aunt Karen, she's still alive. Yeah. She was a lot younger. You know, family's right. having, there's a big space. So, yeah. Yeah, she's still with us. She was them. a surprise. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know, but yeah, it was a big break. But yeah, all my siblings are... Still kicking. Not to be morbid, but I tell them every time we do this, I want to get a picture. Could yeah. be the last time, you know. I mean, because the oldest lives in California. You know, no, not everybody's here. So that's true. I kind of yeah. really try to take it in like, God, all 11 kids are here. I always Let's... kick myself when I have an opportunity for getting a good picture and then I leave and I didn't take it or I never took my phone out. And I'm like, oh, I should have taken some photos. Oh. This was pre-phone, and I kick myself to this day. that I had an idea forever of having a portrait of me with my mom and dad. Uh -huh. Kind of a goofy one sitting in that. We had a, they had a place in the living room. It would have been perfect. Mm -hmm. But I would have had to find someone literally to come over and take a picture, you know, because this wasn't just your phone. Right. And, I mean, I have a lot of photos of my mom and dad, but I don't have that photo, and I hate that I never right. got that stinking photo. Now I would have. Mm -hmm. I'd say, hey, let's get here and... Get yeah. our phones out and get this photo. So. Yeah, no problem. Right, right, right. So yeah. I always say to anybody, if you have that opportunity to take it. Take it. It's like visiting Clark Britton, that old artist. I go, see, he's 88, and, you know, he always acts like he's going to exit the earth any second. That's just <laughs> kind of his joke. But every time I go, I try to, you know, relish the time that, hey, I get to spend another two hours with the Clark Britton. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, it's, you got to yeah. kind of, I'm sure you feel that way. The older you get, you start to realize how Definitely. precious things are and, like, because when you're younger, you can go, is this what we're eating? Ugh, you people. I, yeah. <laughs> when you're older, you kind of realize, this is pretty great. Let's yeah. take this in. So, oh, yeah. definitely. Every meal tastes three times better now than it I ever try, did when I was I try was not to do a lot of sugar. Yeah. And uh, I was, it was like last Friday, Andy and I had gone to dinner two Fridays ago. And on the way back, I went, I want to, I said, can we stop by Quick Trip? I want to get an ice cream sandwich. Because <laughs> it was such a good night, yeah. and he goes, sure. Like, so I ate that on the way home, y'all. And I was just like, "This is the greatest thing I have ever eaten." Yeah. Where I would have probably they are been, good. Oh, they are so good. Because <laughs> it was melting. And I was like, I yeah. Get this even real quick, and I was like, "That was fantastic." It so brings you back. I try it? to understand the preciousness of those things. For yeah. Sure. So let's see. Um, you brought up Facebook, so let's talk social media a little bit. Okay. And I, you work it well, I think. Okay. You Thank did, you. What was it last year? Did you do the every day a rabbit or something? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah. I guess or it was Instagram almost. Instagram was it? Well, it was both. Okay. I mean, I did it on Instagram, but you can send it over to Facebook. Sure. Yeah, I tried to. The rabbits think, of Instagram. No, I tried. What well, was it was it? called draw, draw a Bunny Daily. Uh huh. I was and, and a lot of people love that so much, and they still are kind of whining like I, I they miss a bunny. I te I technically <laughs> didn't do the one year. I did three hundred. Mm hmm. Because I had the show. I did an art show where I sold the 300 drawings. Oh, so yeah. I said it in my brain I was going to do 300 rabbit drawings. That's pretty cool. And then 
post them all over the walls, and I did. And it was really well attended, and they bought a bunch. I mean, it meant a lot to me. I yeah. only say that in the sense that it was shocking because they're little drawings. I mean, yeah, they're they $95, were dollars, but they're just these little. And I kind of thought people come in and go, Pfft. Yeah. so small for 95 like, i imagined it bigger <laughs> yeah right but people you know we're picking up three or four but i did it because there was a documentary on netflix i think it was just called art and design i, I could be wrong but there was a guy on there there was an illustrator mm -hmm. and he has an instagram account it's called drawn sunday or sunday drawing but anyway he does one drawing a week and his is pretty cool stuff yeah but it's his instagram well he has a huge following but i remember thinking well i should just do an instagram an additional page because I have my personal one and I thought uh well I gotta draw something every day and I thought well that's hard because you'll just sit down and I thought well, I'll just do I like bunnies I like drawing rabbits right I'll just do one I'm just gonna call it every day and I'll just do it I'll say, who long who knows how many years I'll do it yeah you know, knowing full well, I was never gonna do it I still do it <laughs> but I it's I changed it now to call now it's called draw bunny whenever which means whenever I feel like drawing one but it was a nice it was as yeah. an artist a great Thing, but every day I sat down. Some of them were really quick. Like you but some, force yourself to. Yeah, do but it was thing. just like, well, I already know my subject. It's right. a rabbit. Right. Even if it's just standing there, I'm just. Yeah. Gonna, even right. if you just did a pin outline right. of a rabbit, right. that was it's your a rabbit, rabbit that day. And the, I, Sometimes I came, you would get really in there. And, yeah, I came up with a motto years ago for myself called "Art from the Gut." And mm -hmm. what had happened was, as an artist. And I mean no dis disrespect to any other artist, but I see artists that do the same style over and over and over and over and over for years and years and mm -hmm. years and years. That's fine if that's what they love. Right. I don't love that. That would drive me bonkers. Sure. So I'm all over the place art-wise. And the problem I have with that, too, is I don't feel like you ever hit on one thing and you stick on it very long. Right. And uh, I got into a rut where I felt like I thought, well, everything I do is starting to look the same. It's all boring. I'm so bored. So <laughs> I started doing – I had done a show – at Kelly Moody's Firehouse. I think that's the first place I did it, where I did like a hundred drawings. I did them like, I drew them and then I varnished them to like a little piece of plywood. Okay. I had the walls covered, but I think they were like $25 a piece. But mm -hmm. the point being, I called it art from the gut because I did them so fast that if it sucked, I just do another one. Right. Just do it. I couldn't sit there and spend time going, well, this is terrible. Who cares? I have to do a hundred. Right. So it was kind of fun to say, here it is, good and bad. Love it or leave it. Love it or leave it. Yeah. And the thing that every artist, especially musicians, everybody knows, probably the one you hate is what everybody loves. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. put any thought in. It's the best thing you ever did. Right. So I found out that not only did that work, but it was teaching me more about being an artist because I was more free with, oh, I'll purposely try to screw this one up. Oh, well, that looks kind of cool. Yeah. And it gets stuck. So I've done that numerous times in almost three home shows, and then that bunny show were that they were always at least 100 drawings the bunny wow. was 300 drawings and so. you're doing it right then right there no or i do them over the course of the year okay. yeah and then i sell them but okay. I, it's like every day i'm trying to do one but right. i it allows me to be terrible because i'm probably going to do one learn actually right, right. you might like okay right. i keep doing this mistake that's but, bothering me but i think as an artist we sit there so many times when we're working and we just second guess everything right because you've been working on this painting for like a month or two well if you're just doing a quick drawing i i can literally say well that's terrible yeah. And then go on but to another one. It's and I in don't the pile care. of things right, that right. I'm going to show. So I've learned more as an artist from just not giving up F and right. moving on as fast as I can. Now, I'm sure some people think he's a hack. You know, he does draw bunny smoking cigarettes. and But <laughs> I've learned a long time ago that I'm an average arti ar artist at best. I don't mean that in any way. I, I own it. I actually like it yeah it takes the pressure off does doesn't and, it <laughs> and yes and it's like this is probably as good as i get but i enjoy it right so i'm doing art for first and foremost the enjoyment and not it i used to always feel this like chip on my shoulder that you had to prove how good an artist you right. were like you have to do a painting that people go oh my god i had no well idea. i love your art so well, thank I, you. I, I don't think you're average at all so well thank you but i i probably sometimes feel you know clark Britton. He'll never listen to this, so I can tell this. Mm. He goes, I turned him on to Pinterest. Mm -hmm. and Clark Britton is an amazing artist, but mm -hmm. Pinterest humbled him because he oh, realized yeah. he could look for artists, and he was like, you know how you sometimes think you're really good? Then you get out on the Internet, and you see, oh, my God, there's, there's some artists. Right. So I think it kind of made him go, oh, shit. And I'll, right. I felt like that years ago. Right. I realized my stuff, it's fine. If people like right. it, it makes me very happy. But you go out there and start looking, you're like, ooh, that person it's it's another all, level yeah, yeah it's a whole nother level yeah there so, are there's some you know super geniuses or whatever super talented sure um beyond 
realms that we can imagine or right. they just have that but um but i think it's challenging yourself and just keeping at it and being consistent and sure, i think that sure. that's part of the drive that makes you well, the I artist you for are for me i think it's like with art group film our film group we we kind of pride ourselves that at the best of our work hopefully moving forward we're no better than the worst b movie and what i mean by that is that takes all the pressure off. We're not right. trying to make Citizen Kane. We're not trying to make something that looks like Blade Runner 2045. It's right. never going to happen. We know that, and we don't want that. Because, my God, how boring right. would it be? you got to learn all these programs and make... Pff, we'd rather see the wire. You know, right. like, it comes in, it's like, that's yeah. clearly on a fishing pole. <laughs> so what? You We're happy. You get the point. We get you? the point. We love it. We embrace it. That's right. So we have that conversation all the time that if we... We go out and say, geez, this is a B level, C level, D level film. Right. Who gives a crap? Did yeah, you have a yeah. good time watching it? Exactly. Yeah, it. Good. If somebody goes, This isn't very good, yeah, we know. Yeah. Who cares? So I've kind of embraced just don't worry about having the bar so high. Just have fun. Yeah. To me, that's what I want to do. I'm too old to be sitting and worried about people thinking I'm a good artist or not. I just want to make art. And if people respond to it, it makes me very happy. Yeah. But if they don't like it, there's Another one coming tomorrow, probably. Usually, I find, is, at least with this podcast, is I'll ask for criticisms or if you find something wrong with it, and then people will be too kind to want to tell you anything wrong with you. Well, you said something I think is important, because I do this all the time, is you you have to say, I'm open to criticism. Because mm -hmm. most people are going to go, that's great. Because mm -hmm. they don't want to go, oh, well. be honest. <laughs> Yeah, so I have found, and I'll say this to people, like, oh, I have paintings that don't work. I'll bring artists over, and I say, tear it apart. Mm -hmm. Like, I need, something's wrong. Right. I think they know, be oh, I can be critical. Honest, right. Because if it's done, most mm -hmm. people want to go, isn't it great? You know, they want, yeah. it's kind of, they don't They're want like, people to come you knew on. you worked really hard on yeah, it. You, we don't well, want to they tell don't you. Want, yeah, they don't want people to walk in and go, you should start over. Yeah. Screw you. Yeah. So, but those you, are the people that always, you know, the failure is what you learn from, not oh God, the getting yeah. it right. So... The people that are honest about uh, criticism of something are the people you remember. And sure. they're the people that are going to make you reevaluate and kind of perceive. I had a guy, and I have to actually look him up what his name is again. Lyle something. He's a really good artist out of uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't even, oh, I'm friends with him on Facebook. And somehow he, oh, I sent him my portfolio. I mean, mm -hmm. my website. Right. And I, again, no ego. And I just said, hey, I, he's a nice guy. But I said, I don't expect you to look at this. But if you get a chance, I'd just be curious what you think of my stuff. Funny thing is he kind of trashed me. Yeah. But he really liked my video and wanted me to fly out to L.A. and shoot a documentary. I don't want to shoot a documentary. Uh, only, I, do, I do video for me. Right. But I laughed at what he said. But then as I really watched, I read what he said, I went, oh, he's right. He's 100% right. right. And what right. he said was, I can't remember what pieces he was looking at, but he said, you clearly have talent, but you're not, you're not sticking, you're, you're working too fast. Okay. You need to keep going with these pieces because I think you're just 25% there. And I knew exactly what he was saying because this stuff's very like, layered. Put the time in it. Well, it was kind of like you have a good idea, but you're not fully doing, you're not executing it. Okay. You're basically going, eh, that's, that's 25% of what I wanted to say. <laughs> On to the next. And in particular pieces, it hit me like a, you like know, it really was what you were doing. Oh, my doing. God. He was exactly 100% correct. So did and that help you change? Or yes and no. It has gone in the back of my head on pieces. I know what he's talking about. But I also know my weird journey. It's mm -hmm. kind of I kind of know what I'm trying to do. Yeah. He was accurate. Right. Um, and I asked him to tell me. But right. my first reaction was, gee, I was begging to trash Dang. me. <laughs> but what cracked me up is I didn't ask him to check out my video. And he's like, yeah, that's great. Your video is really great. Do you want to fly out here and shoot a documentary? Uh -huh. This is what. And I was like, I don't want to shoot a documentary. Right. This guy, Because like everything that happens when it comes to that level of stuff, no one ever offers to pay. No. They want you to get a ticket, fly out and shoot his documentary. No, oh, fuck that. I don't want to yeah. do that. If, so, he, if he would have oh, like, yeah, paid I've for got, everything, right. put you in I a I got a $5,000 budget. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And you can, I still wouldn't have done it. Because yeah. the last thing I'm going to do is spend that much time doing a film for somebody else right. but point being i asked for criticism he gave it to me and he was right even if he was wrong right. i asked for it right so i can't sit there and go how dare he <laughs> give me criticism but when i okay. asked for yeah. criticism <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so ultimately i think you are exactly right if you ask for it like on your podcast and mm -hmm. say no i really want to know what's good and what's work or what's working what's not that's only yeah. going to make you better definitely that's why i told you i said my compliment is you can actually hear it 
Yeah. Well, which is thank a funny you. sometimes. <laughs> sometimes well, yeah. I'm working. All... I'm working on some kinks, but yeah. You guys can't see this. She should post a photo. It's a really nice setup. She got a nice little podcast setup here. I like it. It's home for me. So we we both have our own microphones with our headphones on. Yeah, it's super pro. We're like professional. And she has her light outside the door that says, "What does it say?" It says, um, "Live on air." Live on air. <laughs> see, my cousin bought me that, and I, now I just put it on, and the boys be quiet. I think it's That's fantastic. Like boys be quiet. Yeah, yeah. So mom is recording. Yes. Listen. Yeah. Mom no, it's is great. recording. Good. And I, no one wants to spank it. No, they're they're too big. <laughs> Let's make me. What does your future look like? Uh, that's a good question. Well, the one thing I had mentioned that we're, we're, I'm working on right now, and by, hopefully by the time this comes out, it'll be uh, public knowledge. It's supposed to be in a couple of weeks. I got asked by, I have a long history with Woo Shock mm-hmm. at Wichita State. And I, I, I designed the official Woo Shock back in the 90s. And then cool. about six or seven years ago, it's the one they use now. Nike came in and redid the line work on it and did like a it's the one they're using now anyway this is all getting to a point but the one before <laughs> that was without the legs was my woo shock i mm-hmm. drew and designed that and then i did cool. one for the baseball one was mine with the you know he's in the oval that was mine mm-hmm. so uh about six months ago five months ago i can't remember before the uh end of last year wichita state came to me and said and it was very nice of them they said you know your woo shock's our favorite always has been Mm-hmm. Um, we think you captured the spirit of Wooshock. And I was, okay. <laughs> and they said, well, we're pretty excited because in front of the new YMCA, we're finally going to do the first eight-foot-tall bronze Wooshock sculpture, and we want you to design it and draw it. Cool. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but I'll do it. <laughs> so I, I know did what it. Means. Yeah, I mean, so I did it. And, I, you know, I did a few versions, and they pretty much... Said well, no. well, and here was the other debate. I hope it's okay that I'm saying this publicly. Was was Wu Shock going to be in his sw- skirt, his skirt and his, or was he going to be wearing the sweatpants and the tennis shoes like he is on the court? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Of course, I was 100 percent skirt, skirt and leg. Yeah, yes. hell yeah. And I think a lot of people at Wichita State were. Yeah. But there was discussion back and forth, and of course, I'm pushing for. It. So I had to do the official drawing with, I mean, both ways, mm-hmm. side by side. And unanimously, best I know, they said, yeah, we're doing, we're going to call it vintage at this point for some probably legal reasons, I guess. Mm -hmm. But they're doing the skirt and the legs. Nice. To me, it was like, why is it vintage? It's still woo. He's still, most everybody's drawing Krausen and everybody draws and they still draw the skirt and the legs because it's woo shock. And so vintage or not, that's the way it's going to be. So (laughs) the sculpture's done. So I was real happy with the drawing. eight foot tall? Eight foot tall. And I thought, this will get changed. Mm -hmm. Didn't change it. Wow. They didn't ask me to do anything. The guy paying for it, I think I can say his name, Steve Clark, is the one writing the check. He saw it and was cool. Yeah. He was literally like, let's go. Awesome. And in one of the meetings, they were going around and around how they were going to create it. And it, they they were thinking all, possibly, just all these different ways, fiberglass. And all I kept hearing was the guy paying for it wanted bronze. So I put my hand up and I said, uh, does anybody in this meeting, a lot of people in this room, mm-hmm. know a sculptor? I know. I said, I do. Her yeah. name's Connie or Nat. Why don't nice. we get Connie? And they go, do you think she'll do it? And I said, yeah, if you pay her. Yeah. And so I got out of the meeting, call her. And, of course, Connie, I can't say what she said. <laughs> I mean, I, my she version. She was happy. She was happy. Yeah. Her, my version of it, she said, fuck yeah, I want to do yeah. this. I graduated from well, the sculpture yes. department at Wichita State. Am I not proud? <laughs> yes. And I'm a sculptor. Of course I want to do that. I'm totally. She has, I've gotten to work with her on the, right now it's like basically the two ver, ver, two foot clay version. Oh, cool. And uh, she's let me tweak it, which is no ego. She lets me come in and move arms around and stuff. And really? Da, da, da. So, you know, I get to oversee my part. But the point being is it's her 100%. And it's beautiful. It looks so goddamn nice. good. Nice. So right now it's at the Frog Mill. I don't know what that is. In the Innovation <laughs> Campus. And they okay. have to spend 240 hours carving this thing They're out of They're doing foam. it right there at the lab? Yep. They're carving out of foam, and then she takes it back to her studio, slaps clay all over it. And then they pour Put all the detail, and once that's signed off, she makes like 30 molds of all the different parts of it, Mm -hmm. sends it down to the foundry in Texas. They fire it, do it, everything, and then they weld it all back together. And when does this happen? January of next year, they're going to have it standing in front of the new YMCA in the courtyard. Am I allowed to release this before that, though? You can release it after they announce that it's happening, which is supposed to be happening just in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Because I was just in a meeting and YMCA, the president was there and Steve Clark, and they said, when can we start talking about it? And they were like, whenever you want. 
they didn't care. Okay. They're like, now we don't care Talk about it. But for me, I'd like to Let announce it on Facebook and everything before the podcast comes out. Cool. But uh, no, I'm super excited. I'm well, definitely. I mean, I was already excited, but we were down there the last time because they've been shooting a documentary mm-hmm. on the making of it. Oh, cool. So the crew was down there, and afterwards, you know, I'm standing there next to Connie. You know how sweet Connie is. But mm-hmm. afterwards, I said, "Thank God, Connie or Nat exists." Because this thing would not, it would suck without her. Because it's just beautiful. Well, it's beautiful, but she knows who Wu Shock is. I get to oversee it, and I don't mean that any, I was contracted to basically say, it's got to look like this drawing. Mm -hmm. You drew it. We approved this drawing. Right. Work with her to make sure. And she has. She's she's hit the nail on the head. But the reason I'm saying it, I looked at one of the people at WSU, and I said, who would you guys have got if you didn't get Connie? And they're like, that's a good question. And they had some suggestions. They don't live here. Mm-hmm. And we started laughing. They would have been like, what am I making? They don't know what Woo Shock right. is. It right. probably would have looked like some crazy hula dancing psychopath. <laughs> and I, as the person who's overseen it, probably would have been pulling my hair out like, this doesn't, this is wrong. And they would have been, and they'd been not like, as easy to work with either. Because they know? wouldn't have known what the hell they're right. making. Connie knows. She right. understands. So it's beautiful. And Connie's a lovely person. Oh, she's and so talented. And it yeah. always has been. Right. I mean, always has been amazing. So I'm stoked for people to see it. And, uh, and where's it going to go? In front of the Y uh, downtown? Y is on no, campus. on campus. Right. Y. They're building oh, a Y right now. That's right. And I think it's, lo- I'm pretty sure it's located in the new, you know, the east part where the golf course was. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't even Bradburn. seen where the... Area. Yeah, I guess. Rayburn. Rayburn. That must be it. Yeah. But in the courtyard right in the front, it's going to be... And it's going to be up on a little bit of a pedestal. This thing's going to be like nine, cool. ten feet tall. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to and it. And when that's this is awesome. over, I can show you a picture on my phone. Okay. Of the clay. Anyway, that's so cool. that's what I'm doing. And film. I'm. We're trying to finish this stupid bullet for breakfast. And it's we got happen. two other films lined up right after that. So So it's Art Brute still that you're... Art Brute Film. Okay. You know, my little group. This is our 10th year and... We're just moving along, and we and keep... Art Brutes shooting a documentary for the making of the no. Nope, that is actually else? that is Wichita State. Wichita There's State. Strategic Communications. A guy named Tyler. I wish I had his last name in front of me. Okay. Uh, we well, can zip it to me or something. Okay, if you but want yeah, me he's to... shooting it, and uh, I think it's going. He's real passionate about. It. I'm real excited because I'll just say one last thing is when Pittsburgh just did a gorilla sca- statue, which is beautiful, mm. and Pittsburgh uh, State here in right, what, right, Kansas, right. And uh, she sent me the documentary that they shot of the guy making that. And I was like, holy crap, this is a fantastic documentary. I mean, beautifully shot. So I think, I can't speak for Tyler, but I'm sure he saw that and went, you know, let's do this right. Because this is an honest-to-God documentary, the journey of this thing. Because in his documentary, I think I can say this for him, he's actually talking to a woman out of Wichita State. I want to say he said she was associated with library, but she's going to get on camera and for one of the first times tell the history of Wu Shock. Oh, cool. So he said... Which I think is why I'm excited about. I mean, this is literally. Like this is really going to be. Well, this this statue to me and why I'm excited because this was said in one of the meetings. This is really the first time ever in the history of Wichita State we're going to see what Wu in a 3D environment. Yeah. Other than a the costume, mascot, right? Which is obviously an interpretation. This is it. You know, this, this is, is to it. the detail. Cool. What this thing looks oh, I'm like. Excited. And I'm. I said, God, do you think that? history is going to be accurate and he goes i hope so because <laughs> you know how people sometimes even they, if yeah, they've sure. been somewhere somebody starts digging in the archives and they go oh shit we don't even know all the details right so i'm excited to kind of hear the the real step-by-step history of how Wu Shock, someone studied right, and right now so has. it's I, I think he's taking this documentary very seriously because a lot of people could literally just go well i'm just going to throw together and i think mm-hmm. he knows this is a big deal Hundred cool. years from now, people could say, "Well, watch this. This is the definitive hi- yeah. history of Wu Shock." So, no, I'm super excited, and I'm quadruply quadruply excited because Connie's building it. Yeah, because it looks amazing. That's so cool. That's so cool. So, so it's really been good having you. Oh, it's been a and blast. do you have any final thoughts? No, I uh, I'm glad one. I'm glad you're doing this. Thank you. Because you're documenting. I'm glad you uh, came. I'm thank you, and thank you for lunch. Yeah, uh, you're no documenting. Little uh, snapshot of Wichita's history yeah. with some of the people you have on here. Definitely. And it's, I think, I, this is what I love about podcasts is that, you know, when we're all dead and gone, hopefully it's still going to be out there and someone yeah. can click on it and go, oh. This is exciting. This is history. And I get to talk, hit, listen to some of these people talk. I so, think so too. I, I think that's it's exactly great. what I'm going so for. So I'm proud of you and I'm glad to be a part of it. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're and welcome I, I back think anytime. I think we're both glad to be in Wichita, Kansas. Definitely. It's a fun time to be here. Definitely. Kansas until we die. Exactly. All right. I'm sign up for that. All Perfect. right. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Okay.
thanks again, Wade, for spending some time with us. Um, the Catch a Pocket podcast, you can find us on Twitter or Facebook. Um, we are on Instagram. You can listen to us on TuneIn, Google Podcast, I, Apple Podcast, I guess they changed it. Um, we've got Spotify and a few others there. Anyway, uh, special thanks goes to Kirk Grenstrom for the music and Lisa for allowing me to use it. And I'd also like to thank anyone who supports this podcast and takes the time to give it a listen. I hope y'all catch a pocket you can be proud of. See you next time.